group they released one uh, one head. Um, Nick, what, what's the guys that the, the the backstage guys that come up with all the gimmicks and storylines? Oh, okay. Creative. Yeah, the creative. They they release one of their head creative guys, and um, well, there's yeah. I don't know. I know the top. There's uh, and Ricky Steam the Dragon Steamboat was the was the latest casualty. Uh, Friday, I had wow. the pleasure of interviewing Brodus Clay in Staten Island, New York. We played. Oh, that, nice. yeah, okay. We played that interview earlier, and uh, yeah, yeah, he was at. Yeah, he's, I, I he's got down. a lot of stuff going on too. He's he said he's busier now than he was with WWE. But again, you get to do it at yeah. your leisure now. You know, you don't have that that grueling, you know, wrestling three hundred days a year schedule. Yeah, yeah, I was freaking up. I'm, uh, in a document actually called three hundred and fifty eight. That's another thing that should be coming out. I actually filmed my part at um, at WrestleMania. It was in New Jersey, but uh, Fulvio Tessera, I believe that's how you say his, uh, his name. Although I guess it was his concept, Red Heart's a big part of it, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's the story, yeah, 350 days. That was. It's more about, of course, it wasn't wrestling in the 80s, but I, I, I Marty Genetic involved in that, and they wanted a perspective on things, so I, I managed to get in on, on that uh, that film. I hope it really well. It looks really interesting, and it's the same. Yeah, I mean, just the schedules that people worked in the you know the 80s and the territories were uh, 350 days. Yeah, it, it's, it, it's definitely grueling. I, I guess, you know, some people want to wrestle on TV for a while, and then they want to move on to other things, so it sounds like Broda's doing good for himself. Yeah. But I used to talk to him and Dennis, and I think he was writing something for Discovery Channel. He's had writing things, too, is what he told me. So he, he said, like, he had a lot of problems going on even while he was with WWE. You know, obviously a really ambitious, ambitious guy. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Broder Brod said he was—he's going to Japan. He's doing the, um, you know, the fight for the Dolphins uh, tr- charity, and um, he's got he's nice. got a lot, a lot of things going on. So, you know, and we're and recently in Jersey, we saw Kurt Hawkins. We're going to see Jinder Mahal and a couple yeah. of those other guys. So, I'm glad these guys got on their feet quickly and um, and you know go back to indie wrestling. It's 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 a lot of fun, and I mean, I know it's. A lot closer to the fans, you know. You got these meet and greets. It's not a lot of things that yeah, yeah. you're not used to with these, you know, them being so close in your face. But um, it, it's kind of uh, you're going back home to your roots, so it's it, it's it's good and bad. <laughs> Probably some people aren't happy about it, but <laughs> you know, the the less hectic still for a while. But WWE gives people hires them back. Yeah, it's uh, kind of fun. So, um, what do you, what do you, are you, are you strictly uh, back to wrestling, or are you still involved in bodybuilding? I still do some stuff too. I'm actually just, just really heavy again. Um, I have wrestled in the past, like whenever I go, oh, you, wait, oh, my uh, less power moves now. I have to do a little more agility. I up a lot of my. No, just because I sort of, I mean, I'm five foot five, you know, I'm not super tall, but I'm really muscular, but five foot nine and muscular, yeah, you're going to be the big thing people up, but, you know, I'm sort of mid size. Okay. You know, I can still get really big and muscular and do more power moves, but, you know, I sort of maybe smaller and be able to do more technical stuff. A lot of, you know, I, if you're doing a big girl gimmick, you don't really do a lot of wrestling. I mean, you don't really do a lot of wrestling. You don't really know that you can wrestle. You know, I know some people, when I was just doing a big girl stint, which is, people would want me to do, you know, some people like, oh, you know, do you ever wrestle? And it's like, yeah, I wrestle. I learned a lot of OBC, like Rick Rogers was a fantastic uh, instructor. So I, you know, smaller, I can just, I actually know how to do So that okay. more what I'm doing now that I'm not quite as big. As I've been in the past, again, you know, a lot of just, I mean, I think you'd be getting more bookings now that I'm smaller anyway, so, you know, it's kind of up in the air where it's better for me to put back on more muscle or be more this size, but I, you know, I do a lot more photo shoots because I'm a lot leaner than in the past, but, you know, for the next month here, I'm going to go back to more of my um, bodybuilding training regime, which is pretty much five days a week. Which is it's kind of difficult if you're wrestling a lot. So it's, it's you know I'm going to have to really really 
schedule up my time a lot for those to make sure I get proper, be more efficient. A good route anyway. It, you know, makes it makes it a little bit easier. You get more of your work done, and um, you know, you get to the gym, do your shows. You know, it's, I just think it's 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 better if you're got time to kill. You may as well be in the gym, right? So, yeah. uh, Nick, did you have any questions for Melissa? Um, with with everything that's going on um, between your bodybuilding and your wrestling, I know you're talking about budgeting your time. How do you? How, what's the easiest way for you to budget your time between trying to get some in ring training going as well as uh, working on stuff with your bodybuilding too? Oh, like how I divide. Uh, I'm I'm kind of. Like necessarily to go to the ring so because yeah. in condition part be sure in the I mean Melissa are you are you like walking around in an area right now I'm I'm sitting by a uh, rather left stop and sitting at a, a picnic table can you hear me yeah you keep you keep breaking up every couple of seconds that's why oh uh, stand you're, up you're, and, uh, you're right now Am I down or not? Yeah, you're good now. Okay, okay. Yeah, I wanted to pull over because I didn't want that's why I was driving in the car. But, um, yeah, what I think that the best thing to do is I, I try to go and train first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, most of the wrestling shows are on the weekend, so it, it's not too bad. Like, obviously, if you're, like, doing a WWE schedule, you're on the road four or five days of a week, so it's... Those guys, uh, you know, the ones I talk to, they they are they all train in the morning too. You just you just schedule it in. You like you know you get your rest when you need your rest, and you go to the gym when you have a span of about an hour and a half to go to the gym. You know, I don't I don't need to train the way I did when I was doing professional bodybuilding because I don't need to be that big. Mm -hmm. um, and you also you have to be careful because with the wrestling, well, I mean you can't you can't tire your muscles out the same way I used to when I was bodybuilding because you don't have that recovery time. Okay. So I don't train as heavy anymore. My workouts are shorter and faster. Um, I kind of do supersets or cycle, like a cycle workout. When I was trying to put muscle on, I would do like, say, three to five sets. For size. If I'm to put size on. Mm -hmm. And you, you would fast because you'd want to lift heavy. Um, so, you know, I pretty much do a lower body split. And... You know, I just, I go from machine to machine. It's a pretty quick pick and get some cardio workout while I'm doing it because I'm constantly, um, you know, doing going from uh, exercise to exercise, but my, my weight's always elevated, which is, you know, that's a lot different from how I train for bodybuilding. Okay. But it's nice. My patience isn't as it used to be, so it's actually better for me to, to go last, but get out of the gym. <laughs> you know, I prefer to do that now. It's more productive. It's better use of time and... Um, you know, I'm mostly trying to maintain a certain amount of muscle, I'm not necessarily going to put some on. You know, if I suddenly have some job or someone says, okay, we want me muscular again, then I will, you know, I'll have to change my training to say like legs one day, like um, chest and biceps or something another day. I'll have to do more of a, do the full body over a course of three days rather because um, that's what you need if you want to put some muscle on and, and be bigger, you have to do um, heavier sets and rest more and um, more sets and, di and different exercises. But, you know, I, I trained so much for bodybuilding years ago, my body always maintains a, a pretty good shape anyway, so I'm lucky in that way. Yeah, I, I have to agree with that. I've seen the photo shoots. looks pretty damn good to me. Yeah, thanks. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I met you in person, too, so, you know, I can say that, yes, she looks great in pictures, but, yes, she looks damn good in person. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Uh, Appreciate where, where that. Where can uh, fans reach you on social media? Yeah, on my Twitter is Melissa L. Coat. So you can uh, you can find me on there. My, I have uh, actually three Facebook pages under Melissa Coat. And uh, I, I get supposedly some of some fakes out there. But I, I mean, I handle all my Facebook pages, so I, and I answer everyone, too. Sometimes it takes an awful lot of time, and it might be a short answer. <laughs> answer all my... Uh, all my own messages, and then my website is com, and that's M E L I S S A T E S dot com. Okay. And uh, yeah, I have a show coming up in Georgia. I got shows coming. I'm in Georgia. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
series of shows coming up in West Virginia. Uh, hopefully the tech uh, deal will be, become, you know, a regular sort of thing. I think they run a month at least, at least every month, maybe more than that. It's my first time out there, and someone else arranged it for me, so I have full information on that. Um, uh, up in Canada coming up, so, yeah, I'm all over the place. Well, that's awesome. it's, a, it's a hectic life, but you know, it's, it's fun, you know, I would be so bored if I wasn't doing it. I mean, you can always look at Well, we, we definitely, uh, you know, wish you luck in everything that you're doing uh, now and, and for the future. And we hope to uh, see you soon, either at a, an indie event in New Jersey or New York, or even at uh, a convention out here soon. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll probably be at that way pretty soon. I had, um, I've done some shows at ECPW up that way, and of course, there's a whole bunch of different divisions. So, I was talking to someone from the uh, ECPW showcase. So, I might, uh, I should be up there pretty soon. Um, I just want to, you know, hire that out see what we can work out for that. But yeah, I'll definitely uh, let you know when I'm coming up there so we can meet in person again. <laughs> awesome. Well, we'll be definitely in touch. We'll uh, we'll pass all your information uh, to your fans on our page as well. I appreciate you giving us a call and uh, taking the time out yeah, of your road you trip. thank you so much. And uh, drive oh, safe. no problem. Yeah, drive safe. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we will. My brother driving actually. <laughs> He's actually a pretty good driver. So, so far, nothing bad <laughs> we still uh, have a few more hours to get the Thunder Bay. So, you know, have, have have be back home. Definitely have fun. Well, enjoy, enjoy Canada. I will. Take I always care. do. Take care. <laughs> right, take care. Okay, thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That was Melissa Coates, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we apologize for the audio that happened sometimes with with cell phones. Um, we, during our break, we lost Nick. His cell phone decided to shit out on us, but uh, he came back before commercial break. <laughs> So uh, we got like two minutes uh, before we, we put the uh, the awesome song out there by Phoenix. Uh, you can check her out on SoundCloud, username Phoenix underscore music 14. That's 1-4. Uh, Broken Out of Love Part 2, uh, the Bray Wyatt theme. But um, who do you got tonight for the championship match? Um, I don't think Reigns is ready. I don't think he's ready yet. Morgan is too much of an easy pick. Uh, after the Lucina, I'm going to go with exactly what you said. I, I, uh, Brock will come out tonight. He'll squash Cena after the match and and uh, Rollins will cash in. All right, uh, AJ Lee or Paige? Wow, um, two of my favorite women in the entire world. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go AJ retains, and we'll see a lengthy feud between these two. I do too. I think AJ Lee will be the champion until she gets pregnant. So uh, CM Punk, that's all up to you, my friend. Oh, you mean CM Punk's? <laughs> CM Punk didn't come back. Uh, nope, he didn't. He's chilling out, hanging with Sting. But anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you tuning in. We would like to thank uh, Richie DeGreg for uh, for Brodus Clay, as well as uh, Eric Sims of ESS and everybody else involved. I'd like to thank Melissa Coates, our guest, Brodus Clay himself, the Funkasaurus. He's the man. And again, uh, Phoenix underscore music on SoundCloud. Uh, let's play her song, ladies and gentlemen. Help uh, yeah, help control the nitwit population and have your friends spayed or neutered. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to episode number 33. Have an awesome day and enjoy their pay-per-view. Take care. Chill.